to be in communion and solidarity with them. That's crazy, Father Anthony. That is Christian teaching. And that's when a way what separates Christianity from everybody else. It says, hate your enemy. Kill your enemy. Not Christianity. It only says, love your enemy. Befriend your enemy. Be in solidarity with your enemy. One's neighbor must, listen to this, JP2. One's neighbor must therefore be loved, even if an enemy with the same love with which the Lord loves him or her. And that person's sake, one must be ready to sacrifice even the ultimate one, to lay down his life for the brethren. Can you imagine laying down your life for your enemy? Whoa, that's crazy. Think about the congressman or senator you like the least. You know, I'm going to lay down my life for this person, right? That's crazy. Okay. This is an important one for your spiritual life, though. Um, now, so the person at St. Anthony's, the drunk on the street, the atheist, the over witness, my Aunt Matilda, who I hate, you know, or the only talk in the family functions, right? Um, all these people are in my life in terms of solidarity. And God allows them to be there. Now what do I do? Look to Pope Francis's homily here. And this is going to convict us. What he expects, what the Pope is calling us, the Holy Spirit's calling us on to. In this time of crisis, which the Pope says, it's not only a crisis of faith and culture, it's a crisis of humanity. All right? He says, we just can't worry about ourselves. Oh, that got me, Father Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> Think about how much time I worry about myself. I can't get wrapped up in loneliness or discouragement. Oh, oh, that's number two and number three. Uh, please do not get locked away in yourselves. That is a danger, locking ourselves away inside our parish, making walls. Among our friends, in our movement, Corazon Puro. I'm going to lock myself up in Corazon Puro, I'll be fine, right? I'm going to be, I'll be safe, right? No one can hurt me here with people who think the same way that I do. But do you know what's happening here? When the church becomes closed up in itself, it gets sick. The church must go out. Where? Where, Father Anthony, must the church go? Okay, well, Pope Francis will tell us. Towards the boundaries of existence, whatever those might be. But get out. Do you see that? Get Oh, not right now. <laughs> no, get out. Faith is an encounter with Jesus. And we must do the same as Jesus meet others. We have to bring about that encounter. We have to make faith a culture of encounter and friendship. A culture we find by the sisters. Well, you know what? I mean, how am I going to talk to the people I work with go to school? They're all pro-abortion. They're pro-gay marriage. Oh, they hate God. Well, let's see what he says. Where we can talk even with those who do not think like us. Even with those who have a different faith. i got to talk to the Mormons. Everyone has something in common with us. They suffer. They want to be loved. They will die. They, they are betrayed. They are made in the image and likeness of God at the end of the day. We must go out to meet with everyone without negotiating about the faith we belong to. So you're thinking, okay, I'm going to read like 20 apologetics manuals. Then I'm going to go out and talk to the atheist, right? What the Holy Father is saying is that how we come to a faith is by encounter. Many priests become priests because they had a holy priest in their parish. You may have received your faith because your holy grandmother. She's a saint, right? My grandmother is a saint. My mother is very holy. That's how I got... It's that encounter... Not a book, it's the encounter. And he says this, look at this, so let's continue on here. We cannot become starch-pressed Christians. Mm. Those Christians who are too highly educated, I'm gonna get a doctorate and then I'll talk to everybody. <laughs> who speak of theological issues over tea, calmly. Well, let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> No! Exclamation point. We must become courageous and go out in search of those who are in the flesh of Christ. So my brothers and sisters, this is what the Holy Father is saying to us is challenging. And you're saying, yeah, but I'm afraid to go out. 
and talk to an atheist. I mean, I'm afraid to go out and talk to, maybe I don't know my Bible so well, I mean, the Mormon, or I'm afraid to go out and talk to my crazy cousins, or the gangs, or whoever. And he's saying, don't be afraid. He says, um, one, of the, one of the pitfalls here is to think you have to be perfect. You have to know everything. And that you can't be wounded, right? Fear, insecurity, low self-esteem, may be just the very thing that God wants you to talk about with somebody else on the street. So the Holy Father says, we have to go out. Why? So we convert everybody, bring them into the Catholic Church, Corazon Poro. Solidarity, right? No. Because there are brothers that aren't sisters. And you know, when you look at that, when you look at that, wait a minute, that drunk is my brother. I can speak to my brother, right? I'll give you an example. Um, I, was in, uh, I was going to see a priest friend of mine in Long Island, and I was driving down the Wand, uh, Meadowbrook Highway, and it was in the, about 11 a.m., so nobody's on the highway. And I'm going down there, 55, of course, Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm in the left lane, no 55, maybe 56, right? <laughs> I went to confession. So then I'm in the left lane, right? Nobody's on the road at all, right? So, at any rate, so I'm going, I'm driving, you know, and uh, and I look at my rear view mirror, and you know how somebody's coming out fast, right? You're like, dang. So, <laughs> go over in the middle lane. This guy was going so fast, he must have been going 100 that he was, he was gonna pass me on the right, but before I could even get over there, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I didn't know, you know, so I'm just trying to get over and get out of his way. Go ahead, go on, her, you know? Um, so he took real offense at this, right? Because he had to slam on his brakes, right? Then he goes around to the left, and about half a car length ahead of me does one of these. I was like, dang! <laughs> Now, good thing I was, in a, I was in a peaceful state, you know, so I had to swerve, we all swerve over there, like, whoa, I slow down, you know, so I'm just like, then I get them, and I just go back, and I'm just like, let this guy go on, he, he slows down, does the same thing again, oh my God. I'm just like, eh, yo, something's wrong, he's cursing at me and stuff, I'm just like, yo, so then he goes over the right lane like he's going to exit, so the exit coming up, I'm like, thank God, this guy's getting up, does one of those, right, and I'm telling you, if I hadn't moved, that was it, right? So at the third time, I was like, that's it. You know, and I had like one of these like visions. I had a James Bond car with machine guns. In it. <laughs> I was really about to blow my stack. You know? And um, so finally an exit comes up, and I just went down to like 35, you know, and then he finally comes up and he's let me, showing me his signals, hand signs, and all the gang signs and all the things. So he finally gets off, right? And I was like, man, I wish I was undercover cop, you know. And so anyway, 9 to 55, driving. And, and, you know, that just kind of like when someone crowds your space like that. It's like, and then, um, but God spoke to me. And he said, well, ba basically, I was thinking, I really feel bad for that guy. Mm -hmm. For someone to have that much anger that he'd be risk a car accident, to kill somebody, right? I mean, I really felt bad for him. And you know, in a way, it was, a, it was an insight for me that, you know, that guy's my brother. And I wish, you know, I, I wish I could have pulled him over and said, hey, bro, what's going on? Man? What's going on? So you see, you take the, he's not just a random stranger of my enemy anymore, but he's my brother suffering from, obviously, an evil spirit of anger. My brothers and sisters, that's what Pope Francis is challenging us to go out. We view everybody as our brother and sister. St. Francis viewed the leper, that's my brother. And if that's my brother, it's going to make demands on my life. I cannot simply just idly stand by and be like, mm, let's talk about Jesus over coffee and with my friends, you know. No, oh, that's okay, you know. But he's saying, go out. View them as your brothers and sisters. They will come to Jesus through an encounter. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be the world without an end. Amen. <coughs> Brotherhood's based on God's our Father. The Brotherhood's not based on beauty, right? It's, it's based on we're creatures of God. So that's why St. Francis could see 
a leper who was just rotting. And it was the thing that repulsed him most in his life. And he could just say, you know, that's, God, that's my brother. I have a responsibility for him. And his feeling was absolutely just, just vomit, you know. And just like, that's the last place I want to be in my life. Again, I think, I think what, what you may be, um, it's, it's hard to, to qualitatively measure love, right? Love is based on sacrifice, right? That at the end of the day, you give your life for your son, right? No problem, right? Um, but it's, it's based on sacrifice. And therefore, um, I, I think it's just hard to qualitatively measure that. But that's how you know a genuine, authentic love. Am I willing to sacrifice? So, for example, yeah, maybe I don't have the time to ask the homeless guy his name and go buy him a cheeseburger. Maybe I only have time for, for just uh, whatever, a quick encounter with him. But there's a genuine concern for him. You know, not just a, a passing, well, um, I'll just give him my five cents and be gone. Right? That's not solidarity. That's, that's, not, that's charity. It might be charity, depending on your disposition. Um, I used to live uh, by Union Square, so there's a lot of homeless people. And it's always been a question that I have, so I feel like this is the perfect opportunity. How are you supposed to like encounter all like all of them? Like there's just so many. Like right after the other. And like there was this one time where like I would help one person, and I didn't know there was someone else, but like I felt bad because it's like, I didn't see you there, but like I helped this person, but I can't help you. Yeah, well basically each person's different, right? Each person, we're all, we're all unique. Um, and you can give what you can give, right? You can't, you're not a billionaire, I don't think. <laughs> um, so you can give what you can give, and I think it's one, one person at a time. And the most important thing to give is, is your time mm -hmm. and, your, and to, to let them know they're loved. And as you said in the beginning that you re realize the most important thing in our life that God gives us versus apes and German shepherds and rats is dignity. Right? We're created in the image and likeness of God. So if that can be through a sandwich, it could be through a smile, an act of love, um, so be it. That's our aim. But each person's different, and you shouldn't feel guilty like, well, I do what, you know, talk to one, I've got to talk to everybody, you know. I think if you could have a meaningful relationship with one person. You know, it's funny that children, children themselves, you and I, if, if God is love, right, like St. John says, and our parents love us, the first place we experience God is in the loving acts of our parents. We don't even realize it, though. Mom and Dad are taking care of me. They love me. It's the same, if you, if you will, the same acts of love. If you have an act of love, people will experience God. And especially if it's sacrificial, they'll, they'll experience sacrificial love, the cross, the love that comes from the cross. Another question. Okay, thank you.